Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Digital Zen. We look at the apps and gadgets that could help you to keep calm. Watch what happens when I try to find my inner balance. And should they rename it Mindcraft? The titles that could help you unwind in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we've come to a Buddhist centre because we're learning how to let go of stress and worry and really focus on being in the moment. But there's a tech twist. Of course there is, this is a tech show. I've been looking at whether de-stressing influences like the ones found in places like these can translate through technology. Everyone, take a deep breath. Welcome to this two minute pause in your day. Judging by the number of meditation apps like these on offer, perhaps learning how to switch off is something more and more of us are trying to master. Life isn't always easy. Sometimes there are a lot more clouds in the sky. There are apps to teach you how to be mindful, focusing your thoughts on the present. The technique is becoming so popular, one UK charity has called for mindfulness classes to be made available nationally on the NHS. Become aware of the rising and sinking of the natural breath in your belly. Music producer Peter Rolls created his own meditation apps to deal with the stress in his life. After developing Chillax, a collection of relaxing sounds, he teamed up with a Buddhist monk to develop his next, called Zen Ways. So it's been about how to find ways that people here in the West can access uh, what Zen is really about. And I'm quite sceptical about all these things, you know, I've got a very sciencey background as well as the creative side, and I take all these... Um, sort of new age theories with a kind of pinch of salt most of the time. But, I mean, I've, I've had some really, really powerful experiences doing this meditation. But if zoning out to relaxing sounds just isn't you, tech developers aren't short of alternatives. The makers behind the Muse headband call it the mental equivalent of a treadmill, training you to become aware of your distractions so you can learn to focus better and improve how you handle stress. While Spire's clip-on technology measures breathing patterns and tells you when you're tense before guiding you back to calm. This may all sound rather surprising to anyone who previously thought tech was actually a cause of stress. You're not going to put Pandora's box back, right? We're not going to suddenly throw away all of our phones, all of our email, all of our connection. That's, that's, a, that's a fact of modern life. So how do we use this technology uh, to also create calm and, and focus in our day? Or night... Here's one to sleep on, a pillow that vibrates and plays music only you can hear. Although try not to get too attached to your new tools. If we're just relying on an app, it might take us away from the social aspect, which is so important. So sometimes a really good way of managing our stress might be to engage with, with other people. Those with an eye on the future say tech is helping us to be more. We've got a trend that we call the optimised self, which is people now taking technology and data and using it for themselves and making themselves a better person, stronger person, fitter person, better memory, better eyesight. Well, if self-optimization includes sitting quietly and thinking nice thoughts, I'm all for it. Well, learning how to relax and switch off can sometimes take a bit of practice. And with me now is Gavin Andrews from HeartMath UK. I'm going to come and sit down next to you because you've got some kit here which can help us to practice relaxing. Absolutely. How does it all work? Well, this is uh, called an inner balance trainer, and it gives you biofeedback on your heart rhythms. Um, what it enables you to do is to practice learning a technique called coherence. So coherence is a state of balance, an optimal state. Uh, so we want to be coherent. We want to be coherent, right. especially when we're stressed. Yeah. Stress makes smart people do stupid things. So if we put this oh. on your ear. My ear. This is an infrared sensor and it's picking up your heart rhythms. If you could pop that crocodile clip just on your blouse, please. So each one of these bumps is your That's heartbeat. a bit of a crazy pulse. Uh, it is. It's entirely normal. Don't worry. Okay, we don't need good. to call an ambulance. Um, but what we're seeing here, what we're measuring actually, is the gaps between each of these pulses. And then that enables us to create a waveform. So that what you're seeing here is actually your heart's rhythm in real time. And how do I train myself to chill out? This is a mandala and okay. it's a breath pacer. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to focus your attention on the, the mandala. And now I want you to focus your attention on the area of your heart. Mm -hmm. 
And now you've got your attention there, I want you to imagine the breath flowing into and out of the heart or chest area. But now we want to go to a higher level. So what we're going to do is I would like you to recall something or someone for which you have genuine care or appreciation. Okay, I'm going to think about my baby nephew. Your baby nephew, perfect, okay. Imagine those feelings of care and appreciation for your nephew flowing into and out of the heart area. And it's green, it's gone green. It's gone green already. What does that mean? It means that you're in coherence. Oh, so thinking of my nephew has really relaxed me. Absolutely. Thinking about people we care for and love puts us in a state of balance. So when would be best for someone to use this? Would it be the night before something nerve-wracking or immediately before? Well, certainly. I mean, just in general, we recommend five minutes three times a day. But if you know you've got something stressful coming up, then yeah, spend a bit of extra time on it the night before. And then maybe even if you're travelling in on the, the train or a bus the next day, you could use it again then. Thanks for, thanks for showing me how to relax, and thank you for coming to the Buddhist temple today. My pleasure. Enjoy being coherent. <laughs> thanks. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, are blocks and pixels a key to unwinding? Games for calming down in our review. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. Spotify beefed up its offerings this week by launching a new version with video, podcasts, radio and news. Other features include customised playlists for runners based on their speed. The music streaming company is facing stiff competition. Jay-Z launched Tidal in March, while Apple is expected to set up a dedicated music streaming service soon too. Conveniently keeping with our well-being theme this week, an energy-boosting wearable began crowdfunding on Indiegogo. The people behind IO say its special blue light helps you wake up more easily, feel energised and minimise jet lag. A build-your-own video game system also launched on a crowdfunding site this week. Block Cells on Kickstarter lets you use physical bricks to design your own game layout. You then take a picture and play it on your phone or tablet. It's being touted as a potential tool to get kids interested in game building and coding. Now, it just wouldn't be right to ruin our newfound calm by introducing a load of violent fantasy or shoot 'em up video games for our review this week. So instead, we asked Chris to pick a few of his favourite titles to unwind to. Journey is its a very relaxing game. I say it's got some sort of puzzle elements to it, but the main gist of it, being a game developed by that game's company, it's on the PS3 and it's coming out on the PS4, is you just sort of float around as a little sort of celestial sort of body looking thing. And the main relaxation comes from it's the soundtrack, because as you go along, it's just beautiful and all you're doing is going forward constantly that's the whole point of the game go forward and there's little interactions with people and unlike most games where it's sort of someone shouting in your headphones angrily it's just a little little beeping noise that you can interact with someone with just like a little as you go along and it's beautiful you get into these states of just traveling forward where you reach a sort of zen state where you're just all you're thinking is i need to go forward and it's, it's a beautiful game Animal Crossing New Leaf, it's a game on the Nintendo 3DS, came out about a year or so ago. Ridiculously relaxing game. You just sit down with your 3DS and the main interactions of the game are just talking to the little townsfolk. They're just made up little animals like the penguins and bears running around. You get a house, you go plant flowers, you can dig up fossils if you want and sell them to make little bits of money so you can improve your house. Just hang out and have a good time with animals in an imaginary world. Minecraft, which is available on everything now, from like mobile devices to the most high-end PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones, it doesn't seem like it's a relaxing game, because on the outset, you know, you're being attacked by monsters and all things like that at night, and you've got to hide, but you can skip all of that. Just go straight into the building mode, and then you can fly around. You don't even have to think about collecting anything. You're just building, and you get a group of friends together. It's one of the most like, rewarding and relaxing things you can do with friends, because again, no fret, nothing like that, no time limits. Just sit there and build, and people have built mad things. like They've built the entire Starship Enterprise and like working computers and stuff like that, which I think... In modern society, where not a lot of us get to actually build, it's quite relaxing to actually let out that side of you, to actually sit and create things. Well, that's it for this week. But don't forget, you can stay up to date with all the latest tech news on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, skynews.com and our YouTube channel. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.